had a bunch of parts show up. So now we can get this four-wheeler put back together. Here's the top end gasket kit. I ordered the whole Wiseco top end kit. Has the piston. This is a 40 over. That's what they ended up uh, the machine shop board me out to. It has the uh, bearing, wrist pin, and the C-clips. We can get this engine back together now. Okay, the first thing I did that I didn't get on camera, unfortunately, is I dropped the piston rings one at a time down in from the top, used the piston to put them in straight, and measured the end gap where the gap is in the piston and made sure it was correct. I did it on the top, a little bit from the top, and down on the bottom side. I did it with both rings, and they were both okay within spec. So I went ahead and put them on the piston. Here they are on the piston. And you can see, whoops, I don't know if you can see the little dot right there. That's where the end has to be so it'll close up. And there's one for the bottom ring as well right there. So now we're ready to put this piston on the rod. This piston has an arrow which faces the front. And these are the intake ports and doesn't have any holes in the other side. Okay, I'm just going to use this gasket scraper to uh, clean up a little bit in there. The gasket as good as I'm going to and then I just went around with a shop vac and got out as many little pieces that fell down into the crankcase as I could. They were setting right on the crankshaft and on the rod. Okay, I put this C-clip in. I just pushed it down in. Oops. The C-clip on this side is in. This would be on the other side of the four-wheeler where the muffler is. And I started the pin in. You can see it slides relatively easy in there. And also, I've got the new wrist pin bearing. So now, I'll show you, you can kind of see through the port. I'm just going to pull the pin back and leave room for the bearing. And I'm going to slip the piston over the, over the bearing, over the wrist pin. I'm going to slip the piston over the rod. And I can look through the port and line up the pin with the bearing. And then just push it right into the bearing and through. Now the piston's in place. I just got to put my other clip in. And it says to put these in so that it, they're either pointing up or down on the piston, not front or back. I don't know why, but that's what I'm going to do. started. Okay, I think that popped into place. Now I'm going to put the base gasket on. And the base gasket is setting on. Now I need to fit the cylinder, but I need to make sure well, I'm putting the cylinder in that my rings haven't turned. They have to be lined up with the dimples to hold the rings on correctly. Should just slide right down now. Should be able to just slowly slide the cylinder down onto the studs. Yeah, when you get that uh, coolant hose lined up, it'll fall on much nicer. You don't need to tap it or anything, it'll just fall right on. So make sure you have the hose lined up first. I'm tightening the cylinder base bolts now. Uh, good luck getting the one on the other side over there in the front. It's kind of difficult to get to. I had to reach up with my finger and push the nut up on while I was uh, 
using a screwdriver to try to hold it and get it started. And then you can, the front ones, you can, with, with a 14 millimeter on a swivel, you can kind of get down onto them and turn them. Um, there's a torque spec for them in the, in the engine part of your manual, but uh, I don't think you're going to get any kind of an accurate torque when you're using a, a swivel. Or the front ones, you're going to be using a wrench. And the other side, I think you can barely get to, so I just say snug them fairly tight. Try to do it as even as you can. I've gotten all four of my base bolts reasonably tight. Before I forget about it, I'm going to tighten this antifreeze hose clamp right on the front there. And then I can go ahead and put my exhaust on. So I cleaned up the little exhaust extension that bolts onto the head. And I got the new gasket for it. I'm going to go ahead and slip it on. Okay, what really worked tightening these up was a universal joint with got them real tight real easy. Now I need to get the springs on. Got both of the exhaust springs on, so now the exhaust is on tight. That can be kind of a bear. You want to have a good pair of vice grips to do that. Okay, next I'm going to be putting in the reed cage reeds. And then this um, spacer thing, I don't know what you call it, fits inside of there. So the first thing you want to do is have a good look at your reeds. Get them in the light. Have a good look and make sure there's no defects or cracks, anything like that. And mine look like they're shutting good. A little bit dirty. Overall, good. I got a new gasket to go on, so I'm going to go ahead and put them on. And I didn't take my oil line off, so this is a little tricky. Squeezing it in here. There, got everything lined up. My six intake screws and get them on. Okay, you just gotta make get everything lined up here. Get a couple of these bolts started. And you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and get all six of these on and snugged in. Now while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna throw this um, upper motor mount on. This slips on here. I think. Yeah, like that.
Okay, this mount has two bolts that are that hook it to the cylinder. Right here, and it's important you don't forget to uh, hook that engine ground up. I'm just gonna snug these up, and then I gotta find the right nut for the other part of the mount right there. Okay, I got that nut on the motor mount, and that took a lot of the play out of the motor. The motor was flopping all over. Seems to be good now. Now I just need to get the head on next. Okay, I've got the new head gasket on. I've got my head cleaned up. Now I just need to slip the head onto the studs, which is probably easier before I put the mount on. Because you have a little bit of a clearance issue with the uh, radiator hose. Okay, there. Fell right on. Got the head set right on. Just need to get the nuts on. Get them torqued down. Okay, heads are about the only torque spec and procedure that I take, you know, quite seriously. So I'm going to go ahead and get my manual out and see what it says for them. Here we have the two-stroke torque specs. So we have cylinder head bolts, 17 to 19 foot-pounds. And then we also have our cylinder head order. Basically it's just you're going to want to go star pattern is what's important. So I went ahead and hooked my choke back up, just pushed it down, threaded it in, hooked my vent lines up, have my other vent line routed down out of the way, and put my throttle slide back in. Now I just, and I slid the carburetor onto the boot, which is fairly straightforward. Now I just got to tighten the uh, clamp up and I'll have the carburetor ready to go. And then the next thing I think I want to do is pop this bleeder loose and go ahead and add some antifreeze and bleed the air out right here. I just filled the radiator up. I'm going to take this bolt right here loose. See if we can bleed some uh, air out. Oh, I hear it. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, here's what happens. So I think we got her bled. I was pouring antifreeze in and it was just geysering out. So I think we're I think we got the air out. Went ahead and put the spark plug in, now I'm getting ready to slide the tank in place and I think we're going to hurry up and do that and then try starting it and see what happens. Went ahead and threw all the plastic and the seat back on, got the air box on and all that. together and running. The only problem, main problem right now is this uh, coolant reservoir tank. I'm just planning on putting some epoxy on here probably, sealing this up. I'll just make some kind of a bracket and mount it back on down there. Pretty sure my next project is going to be jumper in this reverse override switch out so that I don't have to push it when I back up. So stay tuned for that probably in a week or so.